Hi, I'm Kirby Allison, and today I'm very excited to review the new The Art of the Hatmaker book by Graham Thompson at Optimo. I'm really excited to finally put my hands on this book. Graham, of course, is a good friend, and I've known that he's been working on this masterpiece uh, for a long time. So to finally see this uh, in the actual physical book, I have to say, has been very exciting. Uh, this book, The Art of the Hat Maker, I have to say is a masterpiece. This is a new um, permanent part of any sartorialist's collection, uh, any library needs this book. Uh, it is without question the most complete and comprehensive book ever written on hat making, uh, certainly of the uh, last hundred years. So uh, this is very exciting. We're going to go through this uh, in detail in today's video. Now a little bit about Optimo Hats. Based in Chicago, founded by Graham Thompson in the 1990s, uh, Optimo is really today's standard bearer for traditional straw and felt hats. Uh, there is no question uh, that they are making the finest hats in the world, and it is no mistake that they're based in Chicago. Of course, this is one of the jazz capitals of the world, uh, and the felt hat is very closely associated with jazz uh, really since its beginning. Graham Thompson of Optimo is easily today's premier hat maker, uh, doing the best work at the highest quality level uh, and based here in the United States out of Chicago. Now, when most people think of a traditional fedora or gentleman's hat, uh, we probably think of uh, you know, the obvious uh, either British or Italian hat makers, but when it comes to quality and craft, uh, and really tradition uh, and the way that it is honored through his work, uh, Graham Thompson at Optimo is without question doing the absolute highest quality work of anywhere. Uh, I'm a big fan of his hats uh, and over the years have gotten to know Graham. Uh, he is one of the most passionate people I know uh, and is fanatically committed to producing the best hats uh, that can possibly be produced uh, today. And I have to say he's really pushing that boundary and resurrecting a lot of the elements of quality and craft and tradition for that matter uh, in the styles that have been lost to time. Now, at the turn of the 20th century, a gentleman simply was not found outside without wearing a hat. Uh, you know, the hat departments uh, in a department store were larger than the shoe departments. They were massive, entire walls, because everyone wore a hat. There is a practical and pragmatic reason uh, to why things arise. And whenever it comes to the hat, of course, it was rooted in the practicality of it. A felt hat like the one I have right here, not only does it keep you warm whenever you're outside, it's windy, it's cold, you lose so much heat uh, through your head, a hat is going to keep you warm uh, really just as much as an overcoat or a pair of gloves. Uh, anyone that knows a cold climate uh, knows that a hat is essential. Now, in addition to that, uh, it keeps you uh, safe from the elements. A beautiful felt hat like this, which is made uh, from a, a beaver silver belly uh, at the highest level, uh, is waterproof and is just as much of an umbrella as an umbrella itself. So again, if you're on a crowded New York City street, everyone doesn't have an umbrella, but if you have your trusty felt hat, uh, you are going to be kept at least a little bit dry. Now with the advent of the automobile, uh, the number of uh, men wearing hats unfortunately collapsed uh, to where we are today, uh, where a gentleman that is seen wearing a beautiful hat uh, really is an exception to the rule. Uh, he's a unicorn, if you will, out there in the menswear world. Uh, but I have to say a beautiful hat sets apart one from even the best dressed in the room. Uh, and so if you're watching this channel and you aren't someone that owns a nice fedora, either a felt hat or a straw hat, I have to say, go take a look at Optimo's website. You deserve it um, uh, to yourself. Again, the sun protection, the protection from uh, the cold, uh, from the elements, uh, and then just the style. So without question, as you can see, I'm a huge fan of Graham's work. Uh, I am uh, never in London without taking one of my hats. So this is uh, one of the first hats I purchased. It's a beautiful silver belly. Silver belly being that highest quality of um, beaver felt. Uh, this is natural, undyed. And again, uh, in this particular color, uh, it has to be the highest grade uh, because any defects uh, in the color of the hair uh, would show through to the hat. So in some ways, it's like a natural cashmere um, that has to be the absolutely highest quality. Uh, inside you see Optimo hats, beautiful hat band. Uh, it is an absolutely incredible hat that I love to wear, especially during the winter months. I have the same hat 
effectively uh, in uh, a smoke felt, a little bit darker, a little bit, um, a little bit more uh, mood in this hat. Uh, and absolutely love this hat. Again, uh, it is something that only gets better with age. Uh, a hat really develops a patina and silver belly. It's a dyed felt, beautiful color. It's like a gray blue, um, nice gray hat band. You can see that this hat has a lot of work. I think I sent this one in to be refurbished. This one should probably be sent in soon to clean. Uh, and then some incredibly precious hats. Uh, this is a Mylan. It's spelt Milan, M-I-L-A-N, uh, but it's pronounced Mylan. Uh, this is a braided straw, it's done in uh, Asia, uh, that is then sewn together in a concentric uh, circle in order to produce the hat cone. What I love about this is the beautiful kind of golden color to it. Uh, less precious, but nonetheless beautiful. Uh, and then this is probably the masterpiece of my collection. Uh, this is a beautiful Monte Cristi Panama hat uh, of an incredibly high quality level. Uh, now with Panama hats, I mean, the sky's the limit in terms of how much you can spend. Um, the finesse is really a product of how finely it is woven. Uh, so here you can see right on the top of the hat just how fine the straw is that is used to weave this hat. Uh, you can imagine how much time it took one person to weave this straw together uh, and for it to be so uniform and perfect. Now, one of the characteristics of a beautiful Monte Cristi uh, woven to a high level is how it's light and it almost, you know, almost floats in the wind. I mean, with a nice breeze, you can see the brim of your hat almost wave. Uh, and so it's one of those elements uh, of quality uh, that is really unique to a, uh, a Monte Cristi hat. So uh, this beautiful hat, great brown hat band, and something that I enjoy wearing uh, tremendously. Uh, whenever I was in Italy this summer, I had it. Whenever I was in Mallorca the summer before, I took this with me. This is one of my favorite hats. I mean, they're all my favorite hats. I keep on saying that, I'm repeating myself. Uh, but this is a beautiful hat, and I have to say, the quality, the craftsmanship, the tradition uh, in this hat uh, really is incredible. Uh, and a straw hat, uh, the quality really exists in that finesse. Uh, and again, going back to the utility of a proper hat, uh, you can't overstate just the importance of a hat in the summertime for the sun protection. Uh, of course, in the winter, the sun protection is important as well, but you need the warmth of a hat. Uh, if you're in London, you need it for a little bit of rain protection if you forgot your umbrella. Uh, but with the straw hat, it's really for that sun protection and to be able to wear uh, a hat as beautiful as one of these in the summertime uh, is just one of those hallmarks of the well-dressed. Now this book, The Art of the Hat Maker, uh, really was Graham's tribute uh, to the tradition of hat making. Uh, hat makers uh, have always, uh, for the most part, been independent artisans and craftspeople, uh, and they have uh, just inflected themselves into their work to create something that I have to say is probably one of the most iconic aspects of menswear there is. I mean, we all think of ties, suits, shoes, uh, that's part of the wardrobe, but whenever we think of someone's signature, we think the jazz artist, we think of Frank Sinatra, uh, we think of uh, John F. Kennedy, we think of their hat. And that is what I love about a hat is its durability. Uh, a hat is uh, something that can become part of one's signature, can become a, a defining feature of their identity and their style. Really last a lifetime, and to be completely honest, uh, only get better with age as it develops patina over the years of use. Uh, now the hat makers are the ones crafting these incredible uh, items, and Graham's book, The Art of the Hat Maker, of course, is really seeking to honor that uh, as much as it is tell the story of hats uh, and talk about how they're made, uh, and then, of course, showcase how they're so beautifully worn. Uh, and this book, I have to say, does all of those three things. So uh, it's a massive book. It comes in at a little bit under 11 and a half inches square. Uh, this is a coffee table library piece uh, that I have to say, uh, after seeing, I'm even more impressed about than whenever I heard Graham talking about it, whenever he was writing it. Now, Graham actually wasn't 
uh, the author of this book. It was Justin uh, Humberston and Morten Erhorn. Uh, they are based uh, in Denmark, uh, and they were the ones that really helped capture this. They were the ones that photographed all of these. Uh, they traveled with Graham literally around the world uh, to the various places uh, that hats are made, uh, to uh, Panama, seeing the straw made, uh, to uh, where the uh, felt is done in Italy. Uh, they've traveled all over. Uh, and then also doing the photography. This is a Graham's factory in Chicago, which in and of itself is a masterpiece. Uh, I mean, Graham converted a 1920s firehouse uh, into his factory. I mean, it is, I mean, he really one-upped me. I mean, I've got my smoking room and my walk-in humidor, uh, but Graham, I mean, he has something that's really special. So if you're ever in Chicago, it's worth reaching out to him uh, and seeing about uh, actually going and touring it. Uh, and there he has uh, all these machines that he's collected uh, over his decades of hat making and then repaired and refurbished um, to better than new conditions. So you walk in, all of Graham's hats are made with the original machines that would have been making hats from the 1920s, which was really the peak of hat making, but they're all beautifully finished. You'd think that they were brand new. I mean, down to the powder coating, uh, they're completely new machines. This is the wall right here uh, with all of his hat molds. Uh, and then again, you know, a beautiful straw hat right there. So what I like about this book, uh, and again, I would love to kind of take you through all of it, uh, is it focuses on, I'm gonna use my words, the quality, the craftsmanship, and the tradition of hat making. Uh, so the book opens with a chapter about craftsmanship, and this is Graham's opportunity to really honor uh, that legacy uh, that he inherited from all those hat makers that preceded him. And there's a quote in here that I have to read because it really in some ways almost sends chills down my body. Uh, just uh, of really uh, how beautifully it captures what craftsmanship is, right? So I'll read this. So craftsmen develop specialized skills to make things with their hands. Craftsmanship elevates this skill to a threshold of excellence that can touch the sublime. Whether a handmade pair of shoes, a suit, a timepiece, or a fine automobile, universal qualities of craftsmanship are always present. I mean, have any more beautiful words ever been spoken about craftsmanship than these words with which this book opens? Uh, I don't think so. I certainly couldn't uh, have said it uh, any more uh, eloquently uh, than it is said here in this book. And this is every single page, every single paragraph uh, is to this level. And again, combined with uh, absolutely beautiful photography, uh, this book is something uh, that you really wanna just get lost in uh, over a cigar, a bourbon, uh, and just read, go back and reread. Uh, so as I said, the book opens about craftsmanship. It talks about the tradition of hats. Again, this golden age, if you will, which was something I referenced earlier. Uh, this is really important for anyone that is a fan or an aficionado of men's wear to understand is the tradition of hats and where they came from. Uh, at the turn of the 20th century, uh, there wasn't a gentleman in the streets that would be found not wearing a hat. You didn't leave home without it. Uh, then Graham gets into his history, how he learned, uh, he talks about Johnny's uh, hat shop, which you can see right here, which was on the south side of Chicago. There's some really great pictures of Johnny who taught Graham uh, during his 11 year apprentice. And then finally, there's some great pictures of Graham from the 1990s. Uh, and then of course, his journey as a hat maker, which begun with a proper apprenticeship uh, with uh, master hat maker, Johnny. So then we get into care, right? Care is very important. We do sell a hat brush here on kirbyallison.com. You can see that right here. This was uh, actually something I developed with Graham. And we have this made in Italy by the same company that makes our garment brushes. And so if you're looking for a hat brush uh, for your hats, there you go, kirbyallison.com, right? We talk about the hat anatomy, right? So this page right here talks about all the different parts of the hat and their proper name. And again, this just allows one to speak uh, with the proper words, as you uh, all know, I sometimes lack. Uh, and so this is, again, uh, really part of how this book is really uh, educational. Uh, and another thing I love about this book is just how incredibly well-researched it is. Uh, I'd say that, uh, you know, I'm, I'm fairly knowledgeable about hats. Uh, and in this book, I'm even learning a lot. I mean, talking about how, you know, felt's the oldest fabric known to man. Again, there's such a rich tradition of the felt used in hat making and hats. It talks about the trade with the Indians uh, and the Europeans. 
It talks about uh, the beautiful beavers from which uh, this fur is taken. Uh, and then of course, uh, also going in to then how, um, you know, the felt bodies are made. And so uh, there's an incredible amount to be learned here uh, on how hats are made. And just like with everything, and we see this in the videos that I film uh, in London on Savile Row on St. James's Street with the shoemakers, is that the more you dive into the craft and see what otherwise would normally be concealed from uh, the average consumer, the more you're able to appreciate what exactly goes into the creation of a product like that. And this book, of course, only uh, deepens that narrative further. Again, every single process of how a felt hat is made is covered in this book with beautiful photographs. Now, right here, you see Graham talking about all the different styles of hats, right? A lot of these uh, are unique to him. Uh, but again, what I like about this book uh, is it really is in many ways a full taxonomy of the different styles and elements of a proper fedora. So there you have that. Another thing I love about this book is it focuses on the beauty and the fashion element of a hat. Now, whenever we look at old photographs of men or gentlemen wearing hats, normally it's in black and white. You're not able to appreciate the diversity of colors and styles. Uh, this is a great example of that. This is an Hamburg uh, in what he calls a silver cloud felt. Uh, you can see how just absolutely beautiful and stylish this hat is. I mean, can you imagine walking into a room uh, wearing this hat? I mean, this would immediately set you apart. I have to say, this is my very modest collection of hats right here, uh, and I feel deficient because I don't have uh, any of these absolutely exceptional fashion pieces uh, that uh, Graham offers. And you'd think, ah, you know, I'm too conservative for this, but as Jean Rousseau approved uh, in uh, the video where I had them made that watch strap for me, I think if you're someone that embraces a classic and traditional aesthetic, choosing one or two accessories as an opportunity to stand out and offer a little bit of variety uh, is a great way to just keep things fresh and interesting. A watch strap, a pair of shoes, your pocket squares, can't be everything because then it becomes too much. But just one or two items that occasionally you mix up uh, to keep things interesting, I think is a great philosophy towards dressing well. Ugh. And look at this guy right here. Look at how well-dressed he is. Uh, Graham, of course, flattering me with an inclusion in his book. Uh, this is me uh, wearing a Hamburg uh, that I have as well as a part of my collection. Uh, this is, of course, our sovereign grade basket weave tie, the Kirby Allison Club tie. And then I'm wearing a, a beautiful and very special uh, fresco suit. It's a, a gray fresco window pane uh, that I inherited from a friend and had altered to fit. So uh, there you go, there I am in my hat, memorialized uh, uh, in this book. I don't, I had to bribe my way in, uh, but here I am. Uh, and then of course, um, you know, no book about hats would be complete without talking about cowboy culture. Uh, now, Graham doesn't make cowboy hats, but uh, a cowboy hat is a, a cousin of, let's say, the Chicago fedora. Uh, and right here, we have that as well, um, you know, being honored uh, in this book. Uh, and of course, in order for it to be complete, uh, it would need to be uh, in there. Then we go to the next section, uh, which is hats born in the rainforest or straw hats. So here's uh, Graham and his guayabera, which I have to say I love guayaberas. Guayaberas are in, uh, and a beautiful uh, Panama hat. Um, so then here we are, a uh, chapter talking about the legendary Monte Cristi, which is a straw hat. The Panama hat, coincidentally, is not made in Panama, uh, and the finest are born in the rainforest of Ecuador. So this is the first place uh, that this book takes us uh, to the rainforest of Ecuador. Uh, and again, if you don't know what goes into the creation of a fine straw hat, uh, this book uh, really opens that up in an absolutely incredible way. There we have it, The Art of the Hat Maker, written by Justin Hammerstein and Morton Erhorn. Uh, absolutely beautiful book. Uh, this uh, is a coffee table piece, uh, part of everyone's library. I have to say they've really outdone themselves. Available on KirbyAllison.com, of course, uh, and Optimo's website. Uh, and if you are not familiar with Graham and Optimo Hatmaker's work. Uh, you really owe it to yourself to take a look. Uh, we are really hoping to get up to Chicago to do a full factory tour with Graham. Uh, we've been uh, trying to coordinate our schedules for a long time. It should be forthcoming. Uh, but until then, grab yourself a copy of this book and take a look at their website uh, and enjoy.
And of course, I'm Kirby Allison, and I love to help the well-dressed acquire and care for their wardrobes while exploring the world of quality, craftsmanship, and tradition. Thanks for watching today's video.